I'm going to show you how to change between a three prong and four prong plug on your stove or oven or range. It's really easy to do. Let me show you how it's done. Welcome to Tomahawk DIY everyone. I'm Mike. I'm here with my friends Tina and Thank Willie. You. He just bought his first house and he's got a problem. The plug for the stove is not working. I'm going to show you how I fix this, but guess what? I did something wrong. So I'm back a few months later and fixing it again. Now I caused more trouble. I've got another video showing how to fix the circuit breaker that I broke. Watch the video. Be sure you stick around to the end because I'll show you what I did and then I'll show you how I fixed what I did. And so make sure you do the second thing first go around. The plug for the stove is not working. He tried to plug it in and it popped the circuit breaker. Okay, so here's the problem. When they moved into their house, the stove was sitting here, but the prior owner had left this plug sitting on the ground. You know, whenever you work on electricity, you gotta practice appropriate safety. In this case, I've got the stove completely unplugged. When they plugged in this stove, it actually blew this thing apart. The black wire from the cord was connected incorrectly. It actually blasted the wiring through the safety cover. So that could have been a serious uh, problem had that safety cover not been put on. When you're working with electricity, it's helpful to have some simple tools. This is a voltage tester. You can see the light flashing. On Clued Link, you can pick this up on eBay. It's really convenient. If I plug it in, see it flash red? There, you know there's live electricity there. That's a neutral spot. This is a ground spot, and this is also live because there's a black and a red wire on this electric range outlet. Now I can further verify by using my multimeter here. And so I'm gonna turn this on to 300 volts AC, that's the squiggly line. Okay, if I get in here, I can check my voltage between the live and the ground, and I come up with 119. This is 120 volt, like most American residential, and so that's right within the range. You know, it should be 120 plus or minus. If I come check down here, I'm gonna find the same thing, another 120 volts. Now my friends actually brought their own oven. It has a three prong on it. We're gonna go change this cord. We're gonna fix this and change it to their oven that's better than the one that the prior owner left with the house. In a turn of surprise, the person who tried to wire this range up and didn't know what they, they were doing, mm -hmm. they didn't even tighten the bolt, the nuts down. Okay, so on the back of our range here, we're gonna open up this electrical panel. Open up the safety cover. And we find in here the three wires. Now the diagram right on the back of this Kenmore stove shows us how to change from the three wire connection like this to the four wire connection like that. It's really easy to do. With this one wired up we've got the black, the white, and the red. And now with our new four wire we've got a red, a green, a white, and a black. So this green one's the extra one and it shows us right here we need to remove the ground strap there and install the green wire on here. We also have a problem with this connection, so we gotta fix that. So, we've got our three prong wire on here and we need to take these off. Now, if you're going from a four to three, you're gonna do the reverse. You just gotta get each of these loose. I've already loosened them, you could use pliers, an Allen wrench, or a drill. Now, we're going to get our, notice our black, this four prong wire connected. So, get the wires all up here. The key thing is this ground strap here. That's the key difference. Notice for the four wire, it says to remove the ground strap. So, we're gonna get this loosened. You can either use a screwdriver. I'm struggling to get that screwdriver turned, or we're gonna use a socket. Okay, uh oh. Be careful, you don't lose all your wires. We need to get this ground strap off. If you want to keep it easy, so you don't lose your wires, loosen these on. Be smarter than I was right there. Also, it's helpful to take a photo before you start work so you can always undo things if you cause yourself a problem. So, we're going to take the grounding strap. I'm just going to leave it on here so it's available if we ever need to make that connection when the stove moves to a new house. Now with my new cord in here, this is the one I had to fix the end, I'm going to follow my instructions up here and get this wired up properly.
Okay, we've got this all wired up. The red wire connected to red, the white to white, the green wire connected down here. We've separated the grounding strap and then the black wires all together. Before we put the safe cover panel on, we're gonna take one last check. Make sure we've got everything wired up properly here. And the green and then the black. Okay, looks good. Let's put our safety panel on. As we saw from the incident that the uh, prior homeowner left, it can ask for trouble. So you wanna be sure your electrical boxes are nice and secure here. All right, this is the moment of truth. We've got the plug put together on the new oven. Let's put it in. Okay, I heard this beep, it's plugged in. We got the clock on. Pause here. Now let me show you my mistake. Again, be sure you're being safe with power. This is unplugged. So I know I'm not gonna get myself fried. So here's the problem that I caused. When I put this connector on, remember this was the wire that had been broken from the prior owner. And so it was a lot shorter. I put this connector on, plugged it in, which meant all the force on this cord was pulling down right out of here. Well, somebody moved the oven, actually that was me, and when that oven moved, the cord got pulled, it popped this out, hit the ground bar, and shorted out, fried that circuit breaker. Check out the other video showing how to fix that. So, here's this clamp connector, this Romex strain relief. I'm gonna need to remove all the wires here so I can get this bad boy in place right through this hole. All right, with those off, we can pull this out. So I'm gonna take my connector here, work it on the wire. Don't worry too much if a couple of these finer threads, finer wires come out. Okay, I think that's on there pretty good. Now I just need to nip off some of these loose wires. Got it opened up. And we'll fish the wire through, like so. Let me check my length on it. And then, there. Now, let's get these wires put back. Putting these back on. Just tighten this down nice and snug. Make sure the wire's not moving once it's in there. Don't forget this important step. Moment of truth, we're gonna try to turn on a couple burners here. Turn this one on, let's turn on inside. There we go, it's heating. So if you found this helpful, smash that like button and leave a comment. Have a great day.